Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to tonight's episode of The More Darthur. Tonight, Sir Tristram faces a jeopardy in the court of King Arthur. Exciting, exciting times indeed. Hello, Julia. Hello, hello, Sarah. Hello, both of you. How are you? Hello, 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 Scott. hello Herbert. Hello, Logic. Hello, hello. Julia, have you been in live before? I've... Is she? I've seen that she's been watching. I didn't realise you were Sarah's sister. Well, hello, Julia. Of course, I should have worked it out by your surnames. But I, I missed out there. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Enns. Hello, Herbert. I saw that you've been watching on Replay, Julia. I saw. So I hope that you're enjoying the show uh, so far. And thank you for joining us live today. Hello, Tara. Hello. Come in. Come in, everyone. Come in. Do take up a seat. And I hope you're all in a very, very good mood. Hello, 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 Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Come in. Come in. Well, big thanks to Sarah for sharing the news of my scopes then. Thank you, Sarah. And I hope the two of you are enjoying them. I do appreciate you coming along. And I hope, well, I know we've got a good episode in for you tonight. Well, thank you anyway. An excellent, excellent episode tonight. As for poor old Sir Tristram, it's about to get rumbled. Which is what we want. We don't want the good old Sir Tristram to be sat around having a happy, easy life. We want him to have to leg it. That's what makes us smile. We'll give it another minute or so, and then, then we'll jump in to tonight's tale with a quick recap of where we've gotten to so far. As you guys might know, of course, this is my favourite tale. Um, the tale of Sir Tristram is my favourite of all the tales from the world out there. So obviously, massively, massively excited um, about reading this stuff. Uh, so I hope you guys will like it at some point as well. We'll uh... You got the rain in California! Never! Never, Sarah! Well, there we go. Clearly, clearly I've been doing something right. Going over to the old Druid Stones in Massam. And doing my dancing, calling upon the rain gods. That's what we like to see. Act the in nature, listening and taking action. It's probably, hello queen, hello, come in, come in. The more enthusiastic I get, probably the more smiting that gets done, the more arm waving that happens, uh, the more rain to come down in Cali. So I hope you guys look forward to tonight. A big hello to you queen, come in, take up a seat. And I'll do a recap and we'll get into tonight's show. So, hello, 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 oh, that's Julia, that's Julia popping in again, hello. On its way, Queen, on its way, um, or thereabouts, Pavolta Tristram's in some hot bother. So, Sir Tristram fought against the Irish knight Sir Maris to try and free Cornwall from having to pay tribute to Ireland. Although it was his first battle, Sir Tristram excelled, slaying Sir Maris in battle. It was a great victory. Sir Maris was one of the knights of the round table. But for Sir Tristram, that success was only short lived. For Sir Maris struck at Sir Tristram with a poisoned blade. Even though Sir Tristram was left standing, he was weakening, poisoned, and discovered that the only way he could find an antidote was if he went to Ireland. That place where Sir Maris had come from, where Sir Tristram would be no welcome visitor. And so he went over to Ireland, disguised as another knight, calling himself Tramtrist, and there, going by the name of Tramtrist, was he, was he welcomed into the court of King Anguish of Ireland. King Anguish, wanting to offer his support for this poison knight, went and asked his own daughter, the Lady Isolde, to tend to Tristram's wounds. 
His wounds were tended to. Tristram started to come back to health. But of course, the Lady Assault is a beautiful woman. And Tristram could not help but fall in love with her. But there was another knight. The Saracen Sir Palamides of the Round Table also in the court of King Anguish, who also had his eye upon her. And in the course of last episode, we saw Sir Tristram face off against Sir Palamides in tournament. The two of them fighting together until Tristram overcame Sir Palamides, defeated him, and won himself a great acclaim. But... In doing so, he's also brought the attentions of King Anguish and his wife, the Queen, who was sister to Sir Maris, the man that Tristram slayed in bloody combat. Ladies and gents! Sir Tristram surely can't stay in the court of King Anguish for much longer. Soon he must be rumbled and have to leave. Hello, Noel. Hello, hello, Andrew and Jane. Take up a seat as we get into tonight's show with Sir Tristram victorious. But with all eyes now on him. Thus... After the tournament was Sir Tristram long well cherished with the king and the queen, and namely with the Lady Isolde as well. So, upon a day the queen and the Lady Isolde made a bane for Sir Tristram, and when he was in his bane, the queen and Isolde, her daughter, roamed up and down in the chamber. And while Governor and Hebes, the squire and knight, attended upon Tristram, the queen beheld Tristram's sword as it lay upon his bed. And then the queen drew out his sword and beheld it a long while. Both of them thought that it was a fair passing sword, but within a foot and a half of the point, there was a great piece broken off the edge. And when the queen saw that gap in the sword, she remembered that a piece of a sword was found in the brain pan of Sir Maris, the good knight that was her brother, and that Sir Tristram did slay. Alas then, she said unto her daughter, the Lady Assault, This is the same traitor knight that slew my brother. He's my enemy. And when Assault heard this say, so she was passingly sore ashamed, for she loved Sir Tristram, and full well she knew the cruelness of her mother, the Queen. And anon therewith, the queen went to her own chamber and sought her coffer, and there she took out the piece of the sword that had been pulled from her brother's head after he was dead. And then she ran with that piece of iron to the sword that lay upon the bed, and when she put that piece of steel and iron into the sword, it met, and then the sword looked as if it was new and unbroken. And then did the queen grip the sword in her hand fiercely, and with all her might she ran straight upon Sir Tristram, where he sat in his bath, and there she writhed through, had not Sir Heaves got on her arms, and held back that sword before it could strike Sir Tristram dread. Then was she let of her evil will, and she ran to King Anguish, her husband, and said on her knees, O oh, my lord! You have here in your house the traitor knight that slew my brother and your servant, that noble knight, Sir Maris. Who is that? said King Anguish, and where is he? Sir, she said, it's that knight who came to us calling himself Sir Tramtrist, the same knight that my daughter healed. Alas, said the king, therefore am I right heavy, 
For I have already seen in the tournament that he is a full noble knight, as noble in battle as any I ever saw in the field. But I charge you, said the king to the queen, that you will not have ado with this knight. Let me deal with him. And then the king went into the chamber to Sir Tramtrist. And then... When he was gone to his chamber, the king found him all armed and ready to mount upon his horse. And when the king saw him all armed to go and leave, the king said, No, Tramtrist, it will not avail to compare thee against me, but thus much I shall do for my worship and for thy love. Inasmuch as you are within my court, I will not slay you, or have any to slay you, but upon this one condition. I will give you leave to depart from my court in safety in exchange for your life. And so, you will tell me who is your father, what is your real name, and if you did slay Sir Maris, my brother. The jig is up, ladies and gents, halfway through tonight's tale. And Sir Tristram has been discovered. The King Anguish of Ireland has confronted him. Let's see what Sir Tristram has to say for himself. Sir, said Tristram, now I shall tell you all the truth. My father's name is Simulodus, king of Leon, and my mother is called Elizabeth, that was my sister, unto King Mark of Cornwall. And my mother died of me in a forest, and by cause thereof she commanded, or she died, that I should be christened Tristram. And by cause that I would not be known in this country, I changed my name, and let myself be called Tramtrist in disguise. And for the tribute of Cornwall, yes, I did fight for my king's sake and for the right of Cornwall that ye had possessed for so many years. And know you well, said Tristram unto the king, that I did that battle for the love of my uncle, King Mark, and for the love of the country of Cornwall, and for me to increase my honour. For that same day that I fought with Sir Maris, I was made a knight, and never before did I do battle with a knight. And from me he did leave me alive, and left his shield and his sword behind. Hmm. So God help me, said the king. I may not say, but you acted as a knight should, and it was your part to do for your quarrel and to increase your worship as a knight should, Howbeit, I may not keep you in this country within my worship, unless I should displease my barons and my wife and her king. Sir, said Tristram, I thank you of your good lordship that I have had with you here, and the great goodness my lady your daughter has shown me, and therefore, said Sir Tristram, it may so happen that you shall win more by my life than by my death. For in the parts of England it may happen that I do you service at some season, that you shall be glad that ever you did show me your good lordship. And with more I promise you, as I am a true knight then in all places, I shall be my lady your daughter's servant, and a knight in right and in wrong, and I shall never fail her to do as much as a knight may do. And I beseech your good grace, that I may take my leave at my lady your daughter, and at all the balance of knights. I will well, said the king. And then did Sir Tristram go unto the lady a sword and took his leave of her. And then he told her all about who he was, and how he changed his name so that he would not be known, and how a lady had told him that he should never be made whole till he came into the country where the poison of Sir Maris's blade was made. Wherefore, 
I was near my death had not your ladyship been here, he said. Oh, gentle knight, said the lady of Sold, full woe am I of your departing, for I saw never a man that I owed so good will to, and therefore she did weep heartily. Madam, said Sir Tristram, you shall understand that my name is Sir Tristram de Dillian. I am gotten of King Melodius and born of his queen, and I promise you faithfully that I shall be all the days of my life your knight. Thank you, said the Lady of Salt, and I promise you there against that I shall not be married this seven years, but by your consent, and to whom that you think I should be married to, Whoever that is, I shall have, and he will have me if you will consent. And then Sir Tristram gave her a ring, and she gave him another, and he departed from her, leaving her and making great do and lamentation. And he straight went unto the court among all the barons, and there he took his leave at most and least, and openly he said among them all, Fair lords, now it is so that I must depart. If there is any man here that I have offended, or any man that has a grievance with me, let him complain here before me, or else I shall depart, and I shall amend it with my power. And if there is any that will proffer me wrong, or say of me bad things, or shame behind my back, say it now, or else never. And here is my body to make it good, body against body. And all of them stood still, and there was not one who would say a word. Yet there were some knights of the Queen's blood, and of Sir Maris's blood. But, after seeing Sir Tristram in battle, they would have no grievance with him. And there we have it, ladies and gents, the end of tonight's tale. Sir Tristram got himself into some hot water in Ireland, but got out of it again. Unfortunately, when it comes to tonight's tale, that's tomorrow, not tomorrow, tomorrow night's tale. That skillful tongue won't do him any good. Smiting is on its way, ladies and gents, and all for the love of a woman. So I hope you're joining me for tomorrow night as we see Sir Tristram laying down some serious blows, some smites, some buffets, and all that good stuff as he fights in the name of romance. And what better reason is there to fight, after all, ladies and gents, than to pull out your sword and your suit of armour for the good cause of love. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming along and listening and participating. And yes, Queen, I caught that kindergarten cop reference. It's one of my favourite, favourite films. So big thank you to everyone, Sarah and Julia and Herbert and Tara and Lynn and Queen, and Noel, and Mokta, and Moon, and Gallagher, thank you all of you. It was wonderful, wonderful to have you guys here. Um, I hope you did enjoy the show. Not as much smiting as you might otherwise have had, but I promise you, I promise you, Sir Tristram's good luck won't last for very long. Smiting is coming up tomorrow, the most vicious kind. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'm glad, glad you liked it. Coming up um, in about 10 minutes, though, um, is my second show of the evening where we do poetry live. Wow, you're stuck in a periwarp. I expect to see periwarp entering the uh, Oxford English Dictionary next year. I think it'd be well sorted then. Well, that's bizarre. Well, I still want points for getting the kindergarten cop reference. It was a little bit out of place, but I caught it. <laughs> um, how about that? Well, 
Periscope's a wonderful, wonderful place where wonderful things happen, uh, including periwarps. Thank you, thank you, Julia. I'm glad, glad you liked it. But yes, coming up in a little bit, I'll be reading some Wilfred Owen um, over for Poetry of Life. You've never seen... Oh, Sarah. Kindergarten Cop is, is for me, without a doubt, one of the greatest films of the 80s. He says, I want to check. Everyone's dressed like it's the 80s in Kindergarten Cop. Is it the 80s? Kindergarten. Oh, 1990. I'm crossing 1990 as still being the 80s. Um, it's, it's one of Arnie's earlier films. Um, yes, yes. It's, it's hilarious. It's, uh, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger playing it for laughs. Um, more so than usual. Um, they kind of did a remake when they did The Pacifier with Vin Diesel a few years back. But yes, I love it. Arnold Schwarzenegger is forced to go into a school and deal with children. Um, whilst still trying to be tough and macho. Um, great, great stuff. I, I'm sure. I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that he was governor of California. Has he? Did he not make his films mandatory watching um, on TV? If I had that power, I'd have him put back-to-back -back films uh, <laughs> on every television network. <laughs> That's what I would do, which is also why no one's ever going to vote me into power. Oh, fab, no, fab. Well, I hope they're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to doing it. 93? No, 1990. 1990 for Kindergarten Cop Queen. That's when it came out. But anyway, I'm, I'm out of juice. Um, and I'm, there's no way I'm going to get through doing all the poetry unless I go downstairs now and grab myself a glass of um, water to drink. So thank you so much for coming. Hello, Susan. You keep popping in and out. I will see you in a bit indeed, Sarah. And everyone else who'd like to come along, please do come along uh, to Poetry Live um, in about five minutes as we go and uh, do some Wilford Owen poetry. Um, there's some very, very beautiful stuff in there. Some heartful stuff as well. Um, but it will be special. It will be great. Please do join me back for a bit of that. Oh, I hope it's not... I hope... We don't want permanent connection trouble, Susan. Not at all. Let's... Oh, I'm glad that you get on the scope live as well, Julia. Very, very glad. So, I'll see you guys in a bit. Gonna go run, run. Yes, I saw it, and then he just kept popping. I get very alarmed, Susan, when people pop in and out. Um, I wonder what's happening to you all. Whew. So let's hope, fingers crossed, in five minutes when I come back, we'll uh, have a more stable connection. Right, I need to run, grab a drink, and then I'll see you guys in five minutes. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your lovely heart and your lovely comments. And if you were new to the show tonight and you enjoyed the show, please do come in and hit follow. So, um, enjoy it. Hearts, hearts make the world go round, Julia. Thank you so much. Right, I'm off. I'll be back in five.